hello my lovely viewer you are welcome again to my channel well in this video we are going to learn how to repair a lead street light okay so before we start anything at all we must have a little idea about the lead street light and then the various components that come together to make up the lead street light okay so simply the lead street lamp is made up of a lead printed circuit board but the lead pcb works on dc voltage and so the supply to the PCB must be a DC voltage. Meanwhile, we normally use these lamps on AC voltages. And so in here, we have what we call the LED driver that will convert the AC voltage into a suitable DC voltage to power the LED PCB. And so most of the time, when there is a problem with the LED street lamp, there are two areas that we look at. First of all, is either the LED driver is not able to put out the correct output to the LED PCB, or it could also be that the LED PCB itself is faulty. All right, so these are the two possible issues that can happen in a LED street light. So first of all, before we start doing anything at all, we would have to plug in or we'll have to power the lamp and then observe how it behaves. Then we will have an idea what actually is wrong. All right, so now the whole lamp is connected to power but as you can see, we have half of it working and then half of it not working. So now we have an idea that at least part of the driver is working and a part of the LED PCB is also working. And so we would have to open it to do further checks to know whether it is the half part of this LED PCB that has a problem or if the drivers in there are more than one and then it's possible that one is off. All right, so the next thing we do is to switch it off and then we open it to do further checks. So we open it from the back here and then we remove the back cover. All right, you can see that there are two drivers in there. This one driver and then this another driver. All right, so now the next thing we are going to do is to check the output of these drivers to make sure that all of them are functioning. If all of them are functioning, we'll go ahead to conclude or we'll go ahead to say that the problem is actually from a part of the printed circuit board. So here, before we'll be able to test the output of the LED drivers, we would have to get access to the PCB itself. All right, so again, we will have to remove the lens. All right, so in this lamp, two LED drivers are used. This is actually a 100-watt street light. And so two 50-watt LED drivers are used to power this LED PCB. So as you can see here, we have positive and negative from one of the LED drivers connected here, positive and negative. And then we have the other positive and negative from the other LED driver connected here. But now, we want to test the output of these two LED drivers to see if all of them are working or if one of them is not working. If one of them is not working, then it's likely that is what is causing this part of the LED PCB not to function. Okay, and so that is the first and simplest test we can do in the process of this diagnosis. All right, so now the next thing we also need to consider is what are we testing? Is it voltage or current? The simplest parameter we can test here is the voltage. All right, so what we are going to test at the output of the LED driver here is the voltage. So the next question is, how much voltage are we expecting so that we'll be able to know how to calibrate our meter for the testing? Basically, that information should be found on the LED driver. So we would have to go back to check how much voltage this LED driver is supposed to give out to the LED PCB. So as you can see from here, 
you have the wattage to be 50 watts and the input this can take an input ac voltage between 85 volts and then 265 volts on 50 hertz or 60 hertz the dc output ranges between 42 and 48 volts so the output is from 42 to 48 volts all right so now we have an idea of what output voltage we should be expecting at the output of the lead driver okay so the lowest value of voltage here should be 42 and then the highest value of voltage here should be 48 so anything between 42 volts and 48 volts should be perfectly okay all right so first of all we are going to test the output between this positive and this negative that is coming from the output of the lead driver and then we also test the voltage between this positive and this negative that is coming from the output of the other lead driver before we can do that test we will again have to connect the lamp to supply and i will use this to cover it so that the brightness will not disturb all right so here we are going to test between here and here and between here and here okay and so before we do that we set our meter the output voltage of the lead driver is not ac it's dc so in setting the meter we have to set the meter to dc voltage we also have an idea of the range of voltage that we are expecting from the output of the lead driver if it is properly working and that is between 42 and 48 volts dc okay and so if you look at the range here we have from 200 millivolts up to 1000 volts so for the meter to be able to read the expected voltage from the output of this lead driver we have to set it to 200 volts dc okay all right so first of all let's test between here negative and then here positive all right so here we have 46.5 volts that is perfectly within the range we are expecting so that tells that this particular lead driver is working perfectly so let's check the other one and see when we come here black here and then red here oh okay so you see that this one there is no output voltage so this means that this particular lead driver is not giving any output voltage to the pcb and if there is no output to the pcb definitely the pcb will not work this shows that one of the drivers is having a problem all right so to get our lamp back in a good shape we would have to replace that lead driver the next check we would have done is to check if there is any problem with the pcb normally with this type of pcb we will only have to do a visual inspection to check if there is any problem with any of the leads here normally if any of the leads is bent you can visually make it out you can visually see it all right so with this one we are very sure that the pcb is very correct and so if we are able to replace our lead driver we should get our lamp working correctly as it should and so here this is the lead driver i'm using for the replacement it is the same technical specifications we have on the sports one that i have here and that is the best way to do replacement whatever you are replacing make sure you get the same type to do the replacement for proper functioning or for proper operation of the lamp all right in our previous test we noticed that between this negative and this positive there wasn't any output so we knew that whichever lead driver this connection is coming from it is that lead driver that is faulty so we'll just remove this one from here and then pull it out so that we remove that faulty driver and then replace it with the new replacement we have gotten okay. so we remove it gently like that then we pull it out from the back all right so this particular one is the faulty one this is what is not giving us any output so we have to remove it quickly and then replace it
So we take this out and then we bring this in. Okay, so here we have to connect all the browns together and then we will connect all the blues together. Then we also have earth here. This is the main input supply. So all browns will connect to brown here. All blues will connect to blue here. And all earth wires will connect to earth wire here. All right. Then we connect this also to input neutral. All right, so the next thing is we bring all the head wires together. Okay. We are left to the output of the new LED driver to be connected to the other part of the PCB. So we push it through here and then we turn it this way. Okay. So we solder this back. Correct. And then this other one. Okay, correctly done. Every connection is properly done. Okay. Before we put it back together, we'll have to actually test and see if we have really done the job or if there is something that is still left to be done. So we connect this back to supply. Good. So now we don't have any problem. Problem is solved. So now we have the whole LED PCB properly functioning now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please, if you have learned something new from this video, kindly like, share with others and subscribe to stay connected. See you in my next video.